a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in exploring ETFs. After a steep decline at the end of 2018, semiconductor stocks have been doing pretty good to start 2019 off. And so that's why our ETF research director, Nina Mishra, thought it'd be a good idea to talk about semiconductor ETFs yes. uh, in this uh, segment. So mm -hmm. what's driving the uh, good performance? Uh, I think it's mainly due to progress in U.S.-China trade talks. Uh, earlier this week, President Trump said that the deadline of March 1st uh, to arrive at an at a trade agreement is not a magical date mm -hmm. and uh, the Chinese delegation is now in Washington DC and they are working on a trade deal so they are they are rising hopes that uh, that two countries would arrive at a trade deal soon and chip stocks semiconductor companies they have a lot of exposure to China. That is why they benefited from developments, positive developments in trade talks. And also, late last year, there were a lot of concerns about uh, demand for chips. Uh, and some companies, NVIDIA in particular, they warned about the up upcoming results and uh, chip demand. But results have been actually better than expected. They were not as bad as feared. NVIDIA, uh, AMD, Xilinx, all these companies, they reported better than expected results. Mm. And uh, also, uh, there is a lot of demand from some of the newer areas of technology, while some of the more traditional areas uh, like PC, smartphones are uh, having like slowdown in demand or flattish demand, but there's a lot of demand from AI, uh, high quality chips um, in AI, self-driving cars, internet of things. So that is uh, going to continue to drive the demand for chips going forward, it appears. So will that demand from these new areas offset? It looks like, and there is demand for better chips, so that is why the companies, they are they are working on uh, better materials and better quality of chips. Mm -hmm. So those will probably benefit these companies going forward. Okay, I was going to say, with the number of products that utilize these particular uh, pieces of technology, could the demand ever dry up? Probably not. Yeah, probably not, yes. <laughs> All right, so... Um, you brought uh, about, what, four examples? Yes, so these are the four uh, most popular ETFs in this space, uh, and there are differences among these ETFs. Mm -hmm. So since uh, these ETFs are in focus, they are in demand by investors, investors should know at, uh, uh, what these, they should know what these ETFs hold, how they weight their holdings, and what are the differences among these ETFs. All right, let's look at them. First, the iShares PHLX Semiconductor ETF. The ticker is SOXX. It is the most popular chip ETF. It has uh, about 1.2 billion in assets under management. Uh, it's a modified market cap weighted ETF, so that means it uses the market cap weightings, but it caps individual securities at 8%, so no single security can have more than 8% weight in the portfolio at the time of rebalancing, and no, not more than five uh, securities can be at that cap. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are the, some of the highlights of this ETF. Let's take a look at this ETF by going to our code page for SOXX. Uh, the expense ratio is 47 basis points, and you can go to external homepage uh, by clicking on the link here, the iShares web page for this ETF, and you can take a look at other details, including uh, holdings. Uh, uh, so as I mentioned, it has a cap of 8% at the time of rebalancing, so that is why you see that uh, Avago, Texas Instruments, Intel, NVIDIA, these are all 8%, about 8% or below. And these are all well-known 
uh, chip companies which are among the top holdings. In addition to semiconductors, it also holds some companies from semiconductor equipment industry. Then VanEck has their Vectors Semiconductor ETF. Uh, so the ticker is SMH. Uh, this is a market cap weighted ETF. It does not have those caps that uh, SOXX has. Uh, one of the cheaper ETFs in this space uh, with an expense ratio of 35 basis points. Uh, now we can go to VanEck web Web, uh, web page for the CTF using the link on the code page on zax.com and as I mentioned it has a more concentrated portfolio uh, with about 26 holdings and let's take a look at the portfolio so Intel which is the industry leader has more than 12 percent weight in the portfolio because as I mentioned it does not have those caps uh, of 8 percent then Taiwan Semi, Broadcom, Texas Instruments, NVIDIA these are other top holdings uh, uh, in addition to the US it holds some companies uh, international companies too uh, from Netherlands uh, Taiwan uh, and a little bit uh, allocation to Switzerland all right, Spider S&P Semiconductor ETF. Uh, so this is an equal weighted ETF. This is also among the cheapest ones, 35 basis points in expense ratio. Now equal weighting means that uh, large companies, mid cap companies, smaller companies, they all get almost equal allocation in the portfolio. So it has uh, more exposure to smaller companies in this space compared to the market cap weighted ETFs which means that it could be more volatile than the ones that focus on larger companies and when smaller companies do better this ETF will outperform the market cap weighted ETFs okay. uh, and again we can go to the webs uh, the code page uh, for the CTF, read articles, research. We have research reports on many ETFs. Expense ratio, as I mentioned, is 35 basis points. We can go to uh, State Street webpage for this ETF and look at other details, including the holdings for this ETF. So as I mentioned, these are, this is an equal weighted ETF. So all almost all holdings are uh, in equal weights uh, again well-known companies uh, that we saw in the other ETFs they uh, they find uh, a place in this ETF as well Xilinx uh, microchip technology micron analog devices AMD all well-known tech companies Fin uh, semiconductor company, sorry. <laughs> okay, finally, Power Shares Dynamics Semiconductors Portfolio. Uh, so this is one of the most expensive ETFs in the space. This is a smart beta ETF. Uh, so it uses a quantitative methodology, and because of that enhanced indexing, it charges a higher fees. Uh, we can take a look at this ETF, so expense ratio is 61 basis points, so among the most expensive in the space. Uh, let's go to the external home page in Vesco web, web page for this ETF, so it says dynamic, so it uses a dynamic uh, weighting methodology. Uh, it uses uh, price momentum, earnings momentum, quality, management action, value, these factors are used for selecting and weighting 30 uh, U.S. semiconductor companies. Let's take a look at the portfolio for the CTF, Xilinx, Avago, uh, Analog Devices, NXP Semiconductors, Micron, Texas Instruments, all well-known companies in the portfolio but you see you can see that weightings are different uh, because it is a quantitative uh, methodology weighted ETF for a smart beta ETF. So how do they all compare? So the, on this slide I have the comparative performance of 
all these four ETFs and uh, I've used them versus the S&P 500 ETF, SPY. All four have done pretty well this year, but uh, the two equal weighted and smart beta quantitative weighted they have performed better than the two market cap weighted ETFs. Uh, the, 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 uh, the ones that did very well are um, up about 19% this year, and the, the two market cap weighted are up more than 17% this year, whereas the S&P 500 index is up about 11%. And do you own either? I do own SOXX and the ETF investor portfolio that I manage. Okay. Thank you for the information. Don't forget, always more ETF information on our website, zax.com. It's the funds tab in the top toolbar that will help get you to that section of the website. Also, the podcast button at the bottom of the homepage will help get you to the podcast page where you can listen to Nina's ETF Spotlight podcast for other ETF information. With Nina, I'm Terry Ruffalo.